The latest FOMC minutes show that the Federal Reserve remains unimpressed with the latest decline in the U.S. inflation. So U.S. yields pushed higher yesterday, equities fell further, and the U.S. dollar marches higher across the board. So welcome. This is Swiss Coast Daily Market Talk. So most Federal Reserve officials see significant upside risks to inflation that may require more monetary policy tightening. That was the major take from the FOMC minutes released yesterday. The U.S. policymakers cited a range of scenarios that included the well, rising commodity prices that could actually lead to more persistent elevated inflation in the U.S. Two of them apparently favored halting the interest rate hikes in the U.S. But the minutes released yesterday showed no official dissenters. The Federal Reserve economists actually also expect nothing but just a small rise in the jobless rates in the US. They apparently threw in the towel on debt and, and well, they're right because the jobless rates just keeps coming down. But they also warned that commercial real estate fundamentals could worsen. So that's an issue. And if that's the case, while well, the regional banks in the US would come under a rising downside pressure, even more so as a Fitch analyst warned this week that dozens of US bank credit ratings are at risk now. So that arrives just a week after the rating agency actually downgraded the US credit rating. And Moody's, which is another rating agency, downgraded 10 US small and mid sized banks as well. But despite the pressure on the regional banks and on the banks altogether, well, the Federal Reserve looks like it will continue to fight inflation and all the inflationary signs that are there in the market. So that message is quite clear to all of us. So the US two-year yield, which apparently already priced in the hawkish Federal Reserve minutes, well, remain just a little change at around the 5% psychological mark yesterday after the minutes release, while the US 10 year yield flares with the 4.30% level approaching last October's peak levels, raising questions among investors on whether levels above the 4% level in the US 10 year yield are a good entry point in the US 10 year papers, or could it go higher from the actual levels? Well, looking at the net speculative positions, well, the rising US Treasury yields do attract investors into the U.S. papers. Asset managers combined treasury positions hit a record in August. But that also means that these positions could be unwound quite rapidly and give way to a deeper sell-off in the U.S. 10-year papers and on the U.S. treasury papers altogether. So my conclusion is, even though the actual levels look appetizing for U.S. long-dated papers, especially with the Federal Reserve's nearing the end of its monetary policy tightening cycle and rate hikes and the troubles that are brewing in China that also increase appetite for less risky investments like the U.S. Treasuries, well, risks prevail. So activity on Fed funds futures gives less than 15% chance for a September interest rate hike from the Fed in the wake of the latest FOMC minutes release yesterday. But the pricing for a potential 25 base points and even a 50 base point hikes in November meeting from the Fed are in play right now, even though the probabilities remain low for the moment. So the US dollar extends gains across the board and the US dollar index is now marching above its 200 day moving average into an overbought market territory with, however, a quite little reason on horizon for investors to step back given the Federal Reserve's decidedly hawkish monetary policy stance on its well, rate policy. The S&P 500 extended losses yesterday below its 50 day moving average and is preparing to test the 4400 support to the downside, while the Nasdaq 100 index closed yesterday's trading session below the 15,000 psychological level for the very first time since the end of June. Tesla, on the other hand, dropped another 3% yesterday on news that it cuts its car prices in China for the second time this week, and the shares closed the session at a spitting distance from the major 38.2% Fibonacci retracement. Uh, on this year's rally, which should distinguish between the actual positive trend that has been building since the beginning of this year and a bearish 
reversal in the medium run. Elsewhere, well, Target shares jumped nearly 3% yesterday after the company announced that it beat profit expectations when it released second quarter earnings at yesterday's trading session. Now, lower costs boosted profit margins full Target and gross margins jumped 27% last quarter. That compared to 21.5% printed a quarter earlier. Net income more than quadrupled. So the shiny results actually helped investors overcome the 11% drop in online sales versus 5% growth nailed by Amazon during the same quarter and the slash sales and profit outlook from Target. So again, despite the risk that US consumers may not spend much or as much in the next few quarters, what we see is in all data point is that, well, they continue spending after all, and this resilience of the U.S. consumer spending, well, starts waiting more on the Federal Reserve expectations than the risks that simply don't materialize. So that's not exactly the case across the Pacific Ocean, mind you, where, well, Chinese retail sales just continue slowing and economic outlook in China, well, simply gets worse. And even the latest interest rate cuts from the People's Bank of China did nothing to improve investor mood over the past week. Hang Seng Index fell to the lowest level since December last year at today's trading session, while Tencent disappointed with a 11% rise on its revenue in the second quarter of this year. So that was well below the consensus. But if Tencent saw buyers below its 200-day moving average today after the results, it's certainly because its online advertising surged 34 percent last quarter so that was the fastest pace in the past five years and it was good news for investors and the company also said that its AI is much better than chat GDP. And I'm not sure it will help reverse sentiment in the Chinese stocks altogether, although the letter sent the stock price 1.5% higher in Hong Kong today. In Europe, well, the latest economic data released yesterday showed that growth and industrial production in Europe slowed, but they both slowed less than expected by analysts, while employment in Europe deteriorated less than analysts expected as well, giving the European Central Bank a good and a a strong reason to continue its fight against inflation in Europe as well. But when we look at data on a microscopic level, well, the IFO said that Germany's skilled worker pool is now worsening, so that's bad news for the German productivity. The Netherlands unexpectedly slipped into recession after showing two straight quarters of economic contraction, and Eastern Europe also continues feeling the pinch of the Ukrainian war because the Polish economy, for example, printed a 3.7% contraction in the latest quarter. Plus, Europe's obviously got a China problem because the European luxury goods have been supporting and even leading a rally in the European stocks as a result of higher Chinese purchases of the luxury products after the you know, COVID uh, restrictions in China were left. But the soaring economic conditions in China, the falling home prices, rising unemployment, and while well, the deteriorating retail sales growth weigh on valuations of the luxury companies like Hermes and Hermes these days. So the SOX 600 index is getting ready to test the 200 day moving average to the downside. So that's near 453 level. And trend and momentum indicators for the SOX 600 index hint that a deeper sell-off could actually be on the European stocks menu this quarter. On the currency front, where the weak economic data from the Eurozone yesterday, even though the data release was stronger than expected by analysts, though the weak data combined with a broad based surge in the US dollar these days keep the euro dollar below its 100 day moving average. So that's near the 109.30 level. The pair fell to the lowest level since the beginning of July, and the strengthening bearish momentum that we see in the euro dollar calls for a 
deeper downside correction from the actual levels. So the next natural target for the euro dollar bear stands at the 107.90 level, which is the 200 day moving average. Now, the European Central Bank will likely keep its hawkish monetary policy stance not by change, but when the Federal Reserve hawks step in, well, the other central bank hawks just need to wait and see before their own hawkishness is reflected in the market pricing. So this is all for today. I'm Ipeka Skardeshka and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive and interesting messages. I hope this episode of Market Talk has also been helpful and insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual. And follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. And subscribe, of course, to our YouTube channel for daily market comments. I will meet you again tomorrow. And until then, good day trading.